I'm not changing my answer. I said what I said. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. Today we are finally doing our review, doing a comparison and a wear test on the Kat Von D Good Apple Balm Foundation versus the Milani Cream to Powder Foundation. Now, I've seen videos about this. I've seen people comparing the two, and I'm here to give you the real tea because everybody's talking about it's a dupe it's it's exact it's the same thing da, 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 da. but is it though so today i have both on my face one on each side comment below and let me know which one you think this is my right side this is my left side which one do you think is which i have kat von d on one side milani on the other side I think you guys are going to be surprised, but I can't wait to share my thoughts with you. So I want to get into the video, but before we do, if you're new here, our little family is growing and I would love to have you join. So please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell. So you know, every time I upload, I upload videos twice a week and it's mainly beauty content with a little bit of fitness sprinkled in. So if you want to see my review, wear test, application, demo, and here are my thoughts on the Kat Von D Good Apple Balm versus the Milani Cream to Powder. Then stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to stay organized with my thoughts, but I have a lot of things I want to address in this video. So bear with me. We're going to start off with Kat Von D. That is the rave right now. Everybody's been talking about it. It's either the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. Some people say it looks great on their skin and lasts long. Some people say it looks like trash and you see their pores and their wrinkles and everything else. So we're going to talk about it. Then we're going to do a full day wear test. So right now it is 1027. We're going to do a full day wear test with one half of my face with the Kat Von D and one half with the Milani. So a lot of stuff to address in this video. All right. So the Kat Von D Good Apple Skin Perfecting Foundation Balm is $38. And there are start there's starting to be more um, availability with it now since I guess it's kind of like not as viral but you're still gonna have some trouble finding your shades depending on where you go. It comes in 40 shades. I have these three shades that I found all at Ulta. I have numbers 68, 70, and 74. Yes, I paid for these by myself, and yes, I'm taking back what doesn't match because I have more than enough foundations. I don't need to keep stuff that doesn't work. The claims on this say that it is a buildable, full coverage, hydrating foundation balm with a lightweight, long wear formula and a fresh matte finish. It's infused with apple extract to help nourish skin, minimize the appearance of pores, and gives a smooth, healthy look, plus it's non-comedogenic. It's non-cakey, flashback free, quickly covers blemishes and discoloration for an instant confidence boost. Packaging is fully recyclable, best for balanced to dry skin, but it also works on oily skin when it's set with the locket powder. You heard that, best on dry skin. Shade matching tip on Ulta's website says some shades look different in the compact than on the skin. Use photos of the shade on the skin to help you pick. Now, I originally thought tan 70 was gonna be perfect for me. And then I got it in and it was a little too cool. The description for the shades say tan 68 is for tan skin with warm undertones. Tan 70 says tan skin with warm terracotta undertones. I didn't pick up 72, although based on what it says and what I know now, maybe I should have because it says tan to deep skin with neutral bronze undertones. So to me, that sounds like a neutral kind of gold a little warmer so and then 74 actually looks lighter than 72 that's another thing that throws you off 
um, it says for tan to deep with neutral golden. So I was like, oh, that's me. I'll insert a picture of what the shades look like when they're swatched. And I tried to go by that, but it didn't work. So we're going to start off with swatches so you guys can see what they look like. So this is shade 68. This is the one I saw Makeup Shayla use. And when she used it, I thought it looked too light on her. But then when she finished her makeup, it looked good. But I was like, I always go one shade darker than Shayla. So that's another reason I picked up 70. But with these, because the undertones are so different, you can't just go by, I'm going to go the next shade up. This is what 70 looks like. So this was the original one that I thought was going to be the best for me. So I'll put these next to each other so you can see how they look. So that's the shades there. So this is 68, this is 70. So you see the difference in the shades. And then I picked up 74, I went in store. And I saw 74 and I swatched it on my hand. And I was like, oh, this is the one I should have got from the beginning. So that's why I picked up 74 and not 72. Just remember it. So this is what 74 looks like. So I'm going to see if I can hold all these up. Y'all don't come for me about my nails. I got a deadlift tomorrow and I did not want to waste a pack of nails. <laughs> so from lowest to highest. 68, 70s in the middle. 74 on the end. So you see how different those tones are. And another thing is I was trying to figure out which shade would match best with my Milani because I wanted to do the comparison. So now we're going to talk about, well, I'm going to swatch these real quick so you guys can see the difference. And y'all know I like to do my swatches on my chest. So we are going to do that. All right. So we're going to start with 68. So this is 68. Then we're going to take 70. I'm using the other side of my brush. So that's 70. And then this is 74. So those are the shades right there. So you see why I thought 74 would be good for me. And then this one is a little too red, but the crazy thing is this is shade 70 and shade 70 in the True Portrait Foundation looks good on me. So that's really what threw me off. But these are the three shades right here. So now we're going to talk about the Milani. The Milani comes in 22 shades. It is called the Conceal and Perfect Smooth Finish Cream to Powder Foundation. It is $10.99, so a third of the cost of the Kat Von D. And it says, Blend In, Stand Out, Milani Conceal and Perfect Smooth Finish Cream to Powder Foundation is back and better than ever. This must-have complexion perfector glides on as a cream and magically morphs into a buildable, full coverage light diffusing powder foundation with a soft matte camera ready finish made with lily and bamboo extracts to control oil and shine to keep the skin on point wherever the day takes you antioxidant rich vitamins a e and green tea help protect the skin light diffusing buildable coverage soft matte that's pretty much it now this one i actually had this already and i picked mine up in the shade amber I picked this up for my wig to tint the lace in the front, but I never tried it on my face. And then I got it, you know, I went back to compare it when I got this and I was like, you know, this is a really good shade match for my face. So I only have one shade. This is 275 Amber. This is not a new product from Milani. They've had this, maybe they reformulate, formulated it because they said back and better than ever, but this is not, this is not new. I'm going to just tell y'all right now, and I'm honestly sick of hearing it. These are not dupes. They are not. Point blank, period. The finishes are different. The formulas are different. What they claim to do is the same. That is it. It claims to be buildable, full coverage, and last all day. That's it. 
nothing else about these are the same and after i tried them i was so aggravated that people kept saying that because i was just like it is not so <laughs> let me not get too worked up anyway let me see i'm gonna swatch this i'm gonna swatch it next to 68 so let you guys see what that looks like here like even picking this up out the pan not as much picks up on your brush you have to be super careful with the Kat Von D because it is very easy to go overboard with how much you put so based on this it looks a little lighter than the lightest one it's not a shade match with this one so we're going to use these two today because they're the closest but they're not the same but even if you just look at this comparing them in the pan you can see that the Kat Von D looks oops sorry hold on looks wetter it looks slicker there's more shine to it this does not dry down to a powder this is a balm a hydrating balm this dries down so that makes a huge difference in how they're gonna wear and your skin type so we're gonna go ahead and get into the application i went ahead and did some with my brows so i wasn't looking so crazy i just tried this micro ink pen brow stylus by l'oreal bit of a learning curve with it but clearly this is not for a sculpted brow look but whatever they just <laughs> they just look a little more tame so we're gonna do the kat von d on my right side and we're gonna do the milani on the left of course i use my sorry dropping stuff of course i use my becca skin love brighten and blur primer y'all know i use this for everywhere test so we're gonna keep that the same and we're just gonna get into it but I just, y'all, it was great in me hearing everybody talk about, oh, it's a dupe, it's a dupe. It is not. I'm going to use a flat top kabuki brush. I'm using two different brushes on each side, so you don't have to worry about mixing up the product. I watched a lot of reviews, mainly for my shade reference, but also just to see what the hype was about. And I did see that a lot of people said you have to start with a little bit and lightly build. So one dip... We're doing just this one dip and we're just going to start. I'm going to start in my problem areas. So I know that's not going to be enough to cover my face, but I'm just really trying to go in lightly with this, but still achieve coverage. I mean, you can see that is already covering a lot. So the question is not whether or not these products have coverage, whether or not, you know, they can do what the claims say, definitely buildable, but Milani didn't say, oh, you have to have, it's best suited for dry skin. You know, it just said, this is, oh, damn it, forgot about my brows. Um, this is how you wear this and that's it. Kat Von D knows that if somebody who is oily tries to wear this, they're face is going to slide off. So this is one layer. And when I dipped in every single time it was tap, go, tap, go. It wasn't swiping a huge amount off because a lot of product comes up when you do it. And that's another big difference between this and the Milani. The Milani, you gotta dig your brush in it. It is a lot firmer and it does not slide as much around when you're applying it. So that's the application of the Kat Von D. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. The claims on this, I think are very true in terms of how it blurs, in terms of how it makes your skin look. This is, it feels orange to me, but we're gonna make it work. That's why I said I thought I should go with this shade over here. But yeah, so this is the application for the Kat Von D. And now we're gonna go in on the other side with the Milani. So this is what the Milani looks like. I have a clean brush right here. It's stained, but it's clean. And I'm going to dip. So if I do the same thing, dip one time and come out, there's hardly anything on this brush. It is not the same. Like I'm 
this is not moving like it's just spreading the product and flattening it out it's not disturbing the product in the pan as much so it's not the same and even now like trying to put this on you got to work this to get some coverage And I mean, I'm digging, like this product is not moving. It is not the same thing. People need to stop lying to y'all. This is not a dupe. To me, when you say dupe, it means that the formula is the same, the color is the same. Dupe means duplicate, the same. If you want to do a video and say these are similar products or maybe pick this one for this skin type and this one for the other skin type, that's different than trying to say it's a dupe. But I'm still digging in this trying to build it up the same, which is not necessarily a bad thing because you have a lot more room to maneuver with this one versus, oh crap, I didn't put too much and now I'm trying to wipe it off with the Kat Von D. But even now, y'all saw how many times I went back in it. This is not as much coverage as the Kat Von D side and it's also not as glowy. So we're going to keep building. I want the same amount of coverage. I almost feel like I need a firmer brush to pick this up. There we go. I don't know how I'm going to get this. I'm going to just have to redo my brows, I guess. Still trying to build to the same amount of coverage. And y'all saw I did not have to go in this many times. I'm going to go back in the center of my brows just a tiny bit with the Kat Von D because I missed this earlier. I mean, look at that. I barely dipped my brush in there. Not the same, guys. Not. It's just not. It also does not help that the shades are not the same. If you use something that is a little cooler of an undertone and you have hyperpigmentation, it will help with the hyperpigmentation because of the fact that the undertone is a little more red and it's like a color corrector as well. So... I'm still trying to build up to cover. Let me put some on my finger and see. There we go. Yeah, so that is another option too, but I didn't have to do that with the Kat Von D. Just to cover up areas that you need a little more coverage, you can go in with your finger and it will help pick up more of the product. So this is where we're going to stop. I don't think I need any more product on my face, but I mean, you saw how much I had to use for the Milani because it just does not pick up as much and it's already drying down. So look how glowy this side is still compared to this. This is matte because it's drying down to a powder. This is our starting point for both foundations. This is the Milani. This is the Kat Von D. So it is currently 10.54. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup. And then I'm going to wear this for the rest of the day. And we will see the difference. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Final face is done. Again, this is the Kat Von D side. This is the Milani side. I finished up my face. What did I use? I used my Tarte Shape Tape under my eyes. I used my Nikia Joy Cosmetics powder. Both of those are for more oily skin and to help combat oil. And because I know this Kat Von D, actually both of these foundations move around a lot. I'm going to just let y'all know that now from the wear test. There's a lot of transfer. I don't understand how because there's a lot of transfer. 
but it still seems to wear well. So I used a powder that I thought would help kind of dry everything down more and used products that were a little more mattifying, even though all my moisturizer, my primer, all that was hydrating. So hopefully that helps. On my eyes, I have this LA Girl palette. Finally picked this up and just did a cute little bronze look and then on my lips i have this ofra cosmetics long lasting liquid lipstick in the shade americano this is a little sample size that i have that i keep in my bathroom and so i just thought it would go well with the look so this is where we're starting i think my face looks good i think everything balanced out well so i'm happy with that and i did use my urban decay all nighter spray to help try to make this last longer you guys will see what I mean by the end of the day, but I'm not working out, but I am going to be doing more packing and stuff around the house and it is warm. So we will see how it goes, but this is our starting point and I like to show you all the time. So it is 1122 and this is where we are starting. So I'm going to probably have this on. It's going to be at least eight hours for sure, but I will check back in with you guys in a few hours and then at the end of the day. All right, guys, we are back with the first check-in. It is currently 2.58. Is that what this thing is saying? <laughs> yeah, 2.58. So we've had this on for about five hours. And this is what we have so far. I am going to come in closer so you guys can see what my face looks like. But I just want to show you what the swatches look like as well. So they've dried down. They've just been sitting on my chest. This is 74. This is 70, this is 68, and then this is the Milani. So, I mean, based on how these look, I honestly still feel like I like this better. I just, I like how that shade looks on me. But, I don't know, that's my preference. I mean, to each their own. I feel like right now, I don't know. I thought I looked a little orangish earlier, but... It's not, I guess it's kind of all balancing out, but I'll come in closer so you guys can see how everything looks. So this is where we are. As you can see, my face does look glowy, which I don't mind at all because I normally look dry. When I wore the Kat Von D in the gym, when I was sweating, it was literally running down my face. Like I would pat like this to kind of damp it off and I could see the foundation on my hand. But then when I went to the bathroom, it didn't look like any of it came off. I don't know what kind of sorcery is in this, but yeah. So like I said, today I'm in the house moving around, haven't really been sweating. I think it looks good. They both look good. I still say they're not dupes. Now, another thing I feel like, I can't say one side is more dewy than the other. And because the shades are not exactly the same, I feel like it's kind of making it look a little different too because this side here is darker than this side here and the Milani was actually lighter. So that's something something else to keep in mind too. But as far as how they look, how they're wearing, I do feel like they are pretty much neck and neck. So right here, the Milani looks like it's breaking up just a tiny bit but my smile lines don't look that bad. I think my smile lines on this side look a little tiny bit more pronounced, but I also, there's a little bit of separation there, but I always set that area really well, no matter what I'm wearing. So dupes, no, but comparable, yes. That's the word people need to be using. Anyway, I'm, I ain't letting it go. It's not a damn dupe. I'm gonna continue the rest of my day and I'm gonna come back and check in with you guys later. All right guys, I am back for the final check-in. It is currently nine o'clock, 9.02, there you have it. So we have had this foundation on over 10 hours and I don't get it. I don't understand, I feel a little I, I, I've, I'm hesitant to use the word oily all the time because I know my skin's not oily, but I'm definitely glowy. There is a sheen, but I love how this looks because I've been fighting with dry skin for so long. So this is where we are at the end of the night. I'm going to show you guys my swatches. 
So here they are, 74, 70, 68, and then that is the Milani there. I feel right now, I don't think my face is the right shade. <laughs> That's just where I'm at right now. I don't, I don't know. I looked at it in the mirror in my bedroom, in the bathroom, and it looks really orangish to me. Like, I don't feel like this shade is the best match for me. I really like 74. So I haven't worn 74 by itself. I'm going to do that before I make a decision on what's going back. But end of the day, do I think these are dupes? No, I don't. I'm not changing my answer. I said what I said. These are, they wear the same. I will give you that. But the formulation, the ingredients, the skin types that they're made for, they're not the same. Point blank, period. I think I said those exact words earlier. However, I do think I'm a bit shinier on the Kat Von D side than I am on the Milani. But the Milani says that it is a cream to powder, which means it will be more oil controlling. Now at this point, this many hours out, does that claim still hold up? Who knows? It might be what I prepped my face with. It might be my all nighter spray. What makes one better than the other? Guys, honestly, I can't tell you. If I think you have, if you're a new to makeup and you wanna try this type of formula where it's a cream, the Milani is a little easier to work with. You have a lot more room with how you apply it and how much you can apply without it slipping off your face than you do with the Kat Von D. But at the same time, the Kat Von D comes in more colors. So if you can't find your shade in the Milani or it's not as easily accessible or you just wanna try something high end, the Kat Von D may have better ingredients as well. So if that's something you're into, different reasons, pick whichever one you like. I am going to keep the Kat Von D and I already had the Milani, so it is what it is. But that's my take on the foundation. I feel like this video is going to be long with all my explaining, but you guys needed to know the truth. I'm tired of people lying on YouTube. I'm not doing it. I'm not promoting something for something that is not. This is not a dupe. They are comparable. End of discussion. That is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know what you think. Am I over-exaggerating the term? Or, I mean, which one do y'all think you would pick up based on how I wore it and what you see? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new, I hope you decided to join the family by hitting that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.